Okay, listen. I hope you all are ready for me to absolutely gush about a game for five to ten minutes, because that is exactly what's going down. This has honestly been one of the greatest experiences I have ever had with a role-playing game, and that is saying something. This is the spirit of 77. Welcome to the Hotel California. Such a lovely place, such a lovely place, such a lovely face. Spirit of 77 is a retro alternative universe RPG set in the backdrop of, you guessed it, 1977 United States. The game is an absolute love letter to 1970s style pop culture and movies at the time. It takes cues from disco, black exploitation cinema, samurai inspired movies, noir pieces, semi truck related lore like Eastbound and Down, and so forth. Seriously, where has this game been all my life? Oh, well, that's where I guess. Well, I mean, I guess that would certainly explain a lot. But seriously, Monkey Fun, thank you so much for bringing a game that is nothing but pure, excellent, 70s cheese wish fulfillment. This game is like this weird blend of 42nd Street Forever grindhouse cinema fused together with mainstream late 1970s pop culture. It is, in a strange sense, one of the most unique experiences that nobody asked for, yet absolutely wanted whenever they were exposed to it. It is akin to putting gravy on your french fries, or looking in the fridge and using anything that you could find in there on Nutella. It's stuff that really shouldn't work, but for some reason, it works so well. Right off the bat, I can praise this game to no end for taking a unique direction in its premise and doing so excellently. The RPG world is one that does not tend to like to take risks. You have your games based on your pre-generated mythos that are really safe bets, and D&D will always sell. But the rest tend to pick their niche and settle in without much exploration beyond that of nerd culture. Pick your supernatural beast, cyberpunk, gothic horror, modern day splatter gore horror, post-apocalyptic, superheroes, and the rest who didn't get there first, well, sure, rinse, repeat, and find your home. Spirit of 77, like Emily Care Boss's Under My Skin, is a journey into new, uncharted territory. Even then, while Boss's game can also be summed up as unique and really excellent, but somewhat lacks in playability, Spirit of 77 has uniqueness, tight gameplay, and playability all wrapped into one fine rap Cuban cigar of awesome. Spirit of 77, in a strange sense, is what every single game developer should strive to do whenever they're making their RPGs. This game truly cuts a new swath. It carves a new territory. It blazes a new path. It does all these different things, and does so in such a fine way that even those who aren't exactly fans of 1970s culture can have an absolute blast playing it. The book itself is also really easy to understand, and spells everything out in a streamlined text. Unlike other games that will hand you gigantic blocks of text, every now and again interspersed with pictures and whatnot, this game tends to keep the paragraph short, and explanations also short, and sweet, and to the point. Instantly, this game draws you in and makes you want more. Even in two pages, you are already ready to go. You're at full throttle and you want to know more. You keep reading and you keep reading and you keep getting more and more engaged. This is so much better than some of the worst culprits of RPGs. Take Leading Edge, for example, the game that is notorious for having nothing but charts upon charts upon charts upon charts. Like one of their games right here is uh, Living Steel. So, as a point of comparison, when it came to Spirit of 77, I opened the page, and by the time I got to page 5, I was full throttle and giving it more. I wanted more of this thing in my face right now. Living Steel, on the other hand... The game also starts off right off the bat, 
tackling the tragic but needed issue of racism whenever it comes to the 1970s. The game instantly calls up those who want to use this game as a vehicle for being racist or making racist characters by simply saying, well, it's the 70s, so racism's a thing. That means I get to shout racial slurs no matter what, and you can't stop me because I'm just playing my character. It instantly stops that dead in its tracks and says, no, this is an alternate universe. Do not be pricks. Bigotry is never fun, no matter what. Instantly, instantly this game comes right off the bat and saying, listen, nobody wants this, nobody wants bigotry, don't use this as a vehicle for you to be a racist asshole. It's wonderful that instantly this game shuts that down right off the bat. We have come certainly a far ways away from something like racial holy wars. Oh yeah, that's a thing that exists. The book instantly throws you back into the 1970s alternate timeline with clips as well as culture as well as ads that really get you immersed, especially for those who are not exactly as in the know as others. It then throws you right into character creation and role playing. I absolutely love the fact that this game only needs 2d6 in order to play. The thing is, is that in any other game, the 2d6 thing is almost an instant turnoff. Say what you will about nerds, we absolutely love our dice, and we kind of get a little turned off whenever the game just says, pick up 2d6, like we're playing some sort of Milton Bradley board game. But this game, this game sold me 2d6, and my god, it's perfect. The gameplay is very simple. 10 or above is a massive success, 7 to 9 is a success, and anything under 6 is a failure. The game then gives you a series of attributes to boost these rolls. Simply, you roll the die, you add your buffs, and you see where you land. Even character creation is cruising down the fucking freeway at 120 miles an hour. Come on, you need a character? You want to play? Get those 2d6, get that character sheet, and go, 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 go! Holy hell, this game is so satisfying. The basic roles are just so great. You have a choice of several different aspects of 70s culture. Those of you who like the East Bound and Down, well, you have the good old boys. A sexy manipulator, something like p good pussycat kill kill, you could take the honey pot. A straight up glam rock rocker, boom, you got him. A tough guy, that's your vigilante. The list goes on. Basically, get as 70s as fucking possible. The artwork is also especially great. I love the fact that there are coupons in the book, helping build the mythos by sheer force of advertisement. This game absolutely blows my mind. I love the fact that these creators took a concept and hit the ground going 100. The idea being that you're either going to crash and burn, create an entire dud, or you're going to make something special. They succeeded and made something really special. I encourage everyone to pick this game up. You can easily find it over at Monkey Fun or at Drive Through RPG. Seriously, make a night out of this motherfucker. Cosplay and show up ready to fucking go hardcore. Bring your best best of the 70s CD and jam the whole damn night. Because this game is worth every damn second of your time. This may very well be the easiest crit I've had to give on this show so far. This game is nothing but excellent, pulse-pounding awesome. And everyone should pick this thing up as soon as possible. Now please, if you could, like and subscribe for more. Also, please go and check out TannerReviews.com and ProjectDerailed.com. Also... Tune in next Tuesday. For that time, we're going to actually dive back into the world of darkness once again. Cause we're